Hi, my warriors. I'm back. I am Tiffany, the syllabus creator. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to give a huge, huge shout out and thank you to all of my current warriors. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, you guys motivate me to keep doing God's work. Um, and it's very helpful. And I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. So today's topic is going to be the truth about sage. What's up with this whole sage ordeal? You know? All right, so let us go ahead and approach the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father God, I pray for any and every person who's watching, who's listening under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Father God, that you will send your angels to watch and protect them and keep them safe from any hurt, harm, disaster, or danger. I pray, Father God, that ultimately your will will be done and ultimately, Father God, all of it will be led. All everything that I've taught and that I am teaching and will teach will lead all your the people back to you, God. Pray that you get all of the glory because that is the importance. I pray, Father God, that you will speak through me. I pray that I will listen and obey the Holy Spirit's guidance and promptings. And I also curse and rebuke any person and anything that is trying to hinder the message that I'm trying to give out to your people. Satan, you are a liar. I thank you, Father God, that you've given me authority over all the enemy, the power of the enemy. But I also thank you, Father God, that our names are written in heaven. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And everyone on the side of my voice, if they have um, chosen to believe in you, in their hearts, and they believe that you died and God raised you up from the dead, and they will turn from their wicked ways, turn from our wicked ways and repent, they are saved. Those people, God. God, I thank you. I praise you. I honor you. And I give you all the praise, honor, and glory for every good and perfect thing because it comes from you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I want to start saying to, I'm in my office, and if you hear it like they're like cutting the grass, it's really loud, and I apologize if you hear that. So anyway, I wanted to start off with uh, a verse, um, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. And of course, you know, I have my OG, my favorite, my um, King James Version Bible. And it says... When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God gives thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Okay? So, just a little um, recap. Okay? So, originally, sage, it originated in the Mediterranean. Um, and it, it has a history of medical and culinary use. Um Hey, I don't know how y'all make y'all dressing for Thanksgiving, but I know my mama used sage. I have sage in a bottle in my pantry. Um, uh, the ancient Egyptians, they, they use sage. Um, there are many like indigenous cultures like Native Americans from across the globe dating back to more than 4,000 years ago each. Um, and they would they use their own medicinal and cultural practices. That's what they use sage for. Um, so it, it actually was the traditions of many Native Americans. Um, uh, I know now it's become like a thing, especially with this new age spirituality stuff. Um, modern day though, and I'm not sure if they used it for the same purpose back then, but for when I did my study right before I was gonna give this information to you all, um, I don't remember seeing anything about them using sage to like ward off negative energy or ward off bad spirits. I don't remember. I'm very imperfect. But upon my research, I didn't find that they in the back of the day used that. Okay. But in today's modern world, mainly that's what it's used for. Sage is supposed to like ward off spirits or negative energy in a space or keep them away um, from what... I learned from like research. That's that's what I found out. Um, but I, I I feel like this is the issue as far as so Christians or Jesus followers. Um, they I don't 
I don't, according to what the word says, I don't believe that we should be using sage. And I'm going to tell you why. Because remember what I just said, the burning of sage today um, is supposed to be used to ward off negative energy, bad spirits, evil spirits, things of that nature. Now, I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 6, chapter six verse 10 through 12. Um, and it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness uh, in high places. So right, that right there is how people who follow Jesus are supposed to combat evil spirits or negative energy. That's how we're supposed to do it. Because the word says, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But of this spiritual world, there's angels and demons. We're wrestling against the demons. Um, the, spirit, the spirit realm, it's a whole nother realm, right? Right now we're in the natural realm, we're, we're awake, right? But the spiritual realm, we can't, you know, fight the spirit with our physical. That makes sense? So that's basically the word is saying this word right here, this sword of the spirit, this is how we fight against darkness, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against powers uh, uh, and principalities. That's how you fight. This is how, now, if you're not a believer, I ain't talking to you. Okay. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about if you believe what's in this book, this Bible, that's who, like, that's who I'm talking to. Because unfortunately the enemy has deceived a lot of believers. The enemy has deceived a lot of believers in thinking, oh, it's all good. You can use this sage, you know, to ward off these evil spirits. No. Um, so yeah, so we, we, we have to, this scripture that I just read in Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 through 12, it points out that the only way we battle in this spiritual realm is through alignment with the Lord to stand against the schemes of the devil. Like it literally says that. Um, so yeah, so it's the concept of manipulating the spiritual realm through any other means, right? So manipulating the spiritual realm through any other means re removes Christ from the equation. It's like, like you, it removes him from the whole thing. Like what did he die for? Like what, you see what I'm saying? And this is his word. He is the word, right? So if burning sage, like rids, like one of the evil spirits, then it's, it's our human reliance that does the work, not our reliance on God. All right. And just a side note, manipulation, right? Um, People who are master manipulators, they are among the most dangerous, pure evil. They are highly intelligent villains who excel at manipulating both individuals and groups to achieve their goals. So when you think about that, what are some people or some groups of people that come to your mind? I can tell you the first, when I was studying this, the first that came to my mind was false prophets. False prophets. They're the first that like false pastors. Pastors uh dressed up like wolves in sheep's clothing. That was my first thought, you know, manipulators. Uh anybody who can try to manipulate you into or persuading you into uh for their agenda, basically. And that's not all. I mean anybody could be a manipulator, but when they know and they're doing it on purpose. You see what I'm saying? Like that's that's the, that's because that that's evil, right? Uh, and it's just people who try to take advantage of us, or they pushing us to do something that we don't really want to do. Like that's Satan. He's forceful. You know that's satanic. Um. So another word for burning sage is called smudging. Okay. So 
while it may not seem bad, so like any practice, prayer, or worship offered up to a false God that stands, it stands in opposition to Christ. Again, I really literally just, just explained, you know, so as that a few minutes ago, it's like, what's the purpose of Christ? What's the purpose of his word? He is the word. Like, what's the purpose of this word? After we just read how we are to fight against the spiritual darkness of this world, the principalities and um, uh, and wickedness, spiritual wicked, spiritual wickedness in high places. I just explained that. Um, and um, so, yeah, so I'm going to go a little bit. So this this uh, term Neo called Neo is a um, modern revival of interest in that? the worship mm. of pre-Christian polytheistic religious traditions, oh, especially those of Europe and um, Egypt. So like I said, I was doing research and I kind of got a little confused. I, mean, I didn't get confused because, okay, first seen so just a little transparency. And becoming more um, I was doing some research. My mom called me. I called it back. <laughs> and um, I ran into, it was an actual, it was like a thesis of a young lady from the University of Maine. And uh, <clears throat> in her thesis, <clears throat> three, <clears throat> two, she mainly talked one. about cultural appropriation and contemporary, and, and contemporary neo-paganism and witchcraft. So basically, um, she actually interviewed witches. She interviewed seven witches, right? Um, and she just talked about how, because again, when I was doing my research, I was trying to see if I could correlate or find anything that, okay, do witches use sage or what, you know what I mean? Like just another pers per excuse me, perspective that I can help you guys on. Um, and it was very interesting. Um, so she talked about how, I don't know if y'all remember Tumblr, Tumblr um, it has a large witch community. Um, and I want to say it was probably something in it that talked about Sage. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out, okay, first of all, why did I stumble upon that? Because when I typed it in, it was something that, you know, um, I figured that was going to say, okay, yeah, witches use this. Um, but basically, cultural appropriation is, that basically means that, is it okay for anybody across any culture to be a witch? Any culture to be a witch or to use this, you know, oh, white people or, or, or black people. So that's neither here nor there. Um, but when I when I read the entire thing, I, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, the purpose. I don't know. Maybe God wanted me to read about and tell y'all about Tumblr. I don't know if y'all know about Tumblr. You know, that's that's the actual like app. It's almost like a community. Um, and it used to be really big, maybe a year or two ago. I'm not sure how big it is now. Um, but this actually, she did this th thesis in 2017. Um, so I think I want to say it was really big now. Um, so anyway, I feel like I just got us off track, but so again, we have something that humans have just messed up, right? We just messed it up. Okay. That's what I'm saying. We messed it up. Because it's not necessarily, like I said, smudging as far as burning. Again, you know, I just told you guys, like Native Americans, the indigenous people, some of the Egyptians used it for culinary, make food. Um, they included it in food. And um, some people had medicinal purposes for it. That's, that's not, I mean, I, that's not bad. Like I said, I have sage, but I use it in my culinary food, you know what I mean? My mama make dresses to use sage. Um, like I said, the issue is, um, so the burning of sage in a spiritual sense, um, is believed to dispel negative energy in a room as well as a wandering spirit that may be, yeah, sent to harm somebody. Um, and, and it's supposed to, it can reduce the number, um, so as far as the, 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 the positive outside of the spiritual, it's, it could reduce the number of pathogens and bacteria in the air. That's not bad. You know what I'm saying? That's not bad. But the addition of the, the, of, of the spiritual benefit to the practice 
of the smudging is not biblical. Unless I missed it. It's, it's not biblical. Unless I missed it. I'm talking about the spiritual. I'm talking about using it to ward off wandering spirits or negative energy. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and it should be abandoned by Jesus followers. If you follow Jesus and you, you know, you try your best to stick to this word, like it said, uh, like the, in Deuteronomy, we, we're not supposed to follow the ways of the nations. We're not supposed to engage in that. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and read you, there's some, two more scriptures. Um, and um, I did find, and like I said, I don't know how true it is, but I really believe that that's why when I typed it in, like the stuff about witches came up because it does say historians believe that bur burning, burning the burning of sage or the, of the, or the smudging, it was used by witches. I just realized we in today's society use the word witch so much. I feel like I had like a thought, like maybe the Holy Spirit is like, explain to the people what a witch is. Okay, so here I have my prophet's dictionary, okay? By Paula A. Price. A witch is defined as a wizard, a practitioner of the occult using sorcery, wizardry, and magic to manipulate the supernatural and compel, compel its subservience upon God's creation. Illegal use of the spirit creation to craft natural forms and objects from, from creator God's immaterial worlds human vessels that oppose the power and authority of Christ and his church on earth with cruel assault tactics against them and God's truth. That's in Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10. And I also said, we use witchcraft. What exactly does witchcraft mean? What is the definition of witchcraft? I'm going to tell you. Witchcraft is the occupation of the devil's agents exercising his dark powers for the production of his will an institution of satanic priests and priestesses of darkness, female lust and the practice of spiritism and necromancy. Spiritually, the practice of abusing creation for one's own purposes by the imposition of demonic desires upon the will and lives of others by magic, sorcery, and other occultic means. You can reference 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, and then Second Chronicle, Chronicles chapter 33, verse 6. So yeah. And then the term, there's a term called Wicca. I used to hear that term growing up. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and explain that. Wicca is an organization of witches. One with knowledge of spell casting and enchantments. A sorceress or practitioner of magic. Exodus 22, 18. A largely women's group, it is dedicated to magic, mysticism, pagan worship, and demonism. Wiccans believe in the mother goddess identified in scripture as Ashtoreth. In mythology, this goddess figure is identified as Diana, Ishtar, and Venus. Another name for this figure is Gaia or Gaia, G-A-I-A or G-A-E-A, -E I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Wiccans, Wiccans subscribe to nature worship and are a mainly feminist group proselytizing for the forces of darkness. I probably said that word wrong, but you know what I meant. Many of them claim to be practitioners of white magic, the sort that does not harm others, but supposedly helps them fate and destiny along a bit. Their main celebrations as a renamed witchcraft organization coincide with the spring, summer, fall, and winter equinoxes and solstices with Samhain or Hall Halloween being for them a high holy day. Aside from the typical nature worship rituals, festivities ordinar ordinarily include intoxication to condition one for spiritual activities and fertility rites, R-I-T-E-S, to unite worshipers with their deity spirit. Be aware, be careful. Okay, so in this, like I said, in this particular video, the burning of sage in a spiritual sense to ward off negative injury, energy uh, uh, or, or, in a wander, or any wandering spirits that come and try to harm you, that is considered a tradition of men. All right. And then my last, um, one of my last 
verses I want to read is back in Deuteronomy where we were. Um, one second, where we were. I had my marker there, but I ended up having to go. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 30 to 32. Okay. Chapter 12, verse 30 and 32. All right, it says, Take heed to thyself that you be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Again, remember, we're talking about traditions of men. We're talking about the, the, the ways of the nation. Don't follow that. If you are a Jesus follower, you, we're not supposed to be following that. Okay? Then it said, Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord, which he hates, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. That right there, they talk about sacrificing. Sacrificing babies and sacrificing children. That, I believe, I kind of talked about that in one of my first, I think my first ever video, I think I kind of talked about that. Like sacrificing kids, abortions, and all of that is uh, considered, when when it happens, um, it's really often the, the child or whatever up to a deity called Molech. It's a demonic deity. Um, so yeah, it's mainly just don't follow them. Like, Basically, this saying the same thing in a different way that Deuteronomy 18 and 9 was saying. I'm going to tell you, this, this is what Deuteronomy, um, oh wait, really quick, I apologize. Let me read um, the last verse, uh, verse 32. What things soever I command you, observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereunto, nor diminish from it. So don't add it or take away. Um, but 18 and 9, it says, uh, when, when thou art come, Deuteronomy 18 and 9, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God gives thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. So, and again, in this particular sense, the burning of sage, and I, I know I sound repetitive, but again, some of us have been deceived. Some believers have been deceived in using sage in a spiritual sense to word, to ward off wandering spirits that may try to come and harm them or harm them or negative energy. They have been deceived. That is a, uh, the abomination of those nations. Right. And then I go back to right here. It says, take heed that you, that take heed to thyself that we not snared by following them. Don't follow them, the, the, the nations don't follow what don't follow what because it looks good or because it's popular or some celebrity is doing it or some actor is doing it or some uh, uh, singer is doing it or some like I don't care. Don't follow that. If you are a believer, you're not to follow that. It said, you know, we were not supposed to be engaging in that. Again, some of believers may not know, but now it's like, OK. Now that you know, what are you going to do? You know, like I said, um, I'm not sitting up here pretending like I have arrived, but it's just certain things. And I'm like, okay, wow. Like I didn't know that, you know, again, you have free will. You don't have to. And I always want you to go and read these scriptures for yourselves. Do this research for yourself. Don't automatically just take my word for it, okay? You'll know what's in my spirit by how I act it out. I use this word. This is my primary resource, okay? So, again, um, what's the truth about sage? In my opinion, as far as it's not supposed to be, um, it's not supposed to be used in a spiritual sense. If you are a believer, it's not supposed to be used in a spiritual sense to ward off any negative energy, any demonic energy, any wandering spirit. It's not supposed to be used for that. People do use it for their food. They use it. It's, it's medicinal. 
Ain't nothing wrong with that. As a believer, the only issue is when you try to use it basically in place of the word, in place of using the sword of the spirit to fight against the spiritual realm. That's called warfare. That's the issue. So I appreciate y'all. I thank you. Again, I, I appreciate my all my OG subscribers. Um, I appreciate you all. I'm so grateful for you. Um, and my new subscribers, I'm Tiffany. Again, this is a lifestyle channel, but my primary um, reason for creating this channel is I wanted to listen and obey the Holy Spirit's guidance and promptings to teach you all the word and help bridge that gap between the world, the secular world, the world, and the biblical. How can I put that and, and help, uh, help people understand how it correlates with what's going on today? Um, so I thank you again. I can't say it enough. You just don't know. Um, I have so much fun doing this and opening the eyes of God's people. Um, and just helping you, you help me. I help you. That's how we do this. All right. So until next time, have an awesome day. And once again, I always say you could have been anywhere in the world, but you decided to be here with me and I'm grateful for that. And I'll see y'all next time.